Tell me what happens when you deliberately insert leftist ideology and ideologues into films that are marketed directly to children. I'm going to save you the time on that. It doesn't go too well. Welcome. This is Pop Culture Rocks. You know who I am. Yo, man. Yo. Disney got some problems. Pixar has some problems. Let's just uh, cut to the chase and get over here to Bounding Into Comics with our friend, the inimitable John F. Trent. Elemental gets hosed at the box office. Has worst opening weekend for a Pixar film ever hold on a second let me get back to the big head ever ever just leave the kids alone leave the kids alone let them mature let them become adults well i'm not asking you to i'm telling you to let them choose what they're going to be uh forced indoctrination of children is something that nobody wants to see except people that are insane <clears throat> or Disney or Pixar, apparently, because it's not exactly like this project fell out of the sky. No, they had to order it. They had to make it. It was a willful, conscious choice to do this. The latest Pixar release, Elemental, did worse than projections. It posted the worst opening weekend at the box office in Pixar's entire history. Folks, that's saying something. That's, that is saying something. Oh my goodness, look at this shit. It doesn't look good anyways. According to the numbers, the film grossed $29.5 million at the domestic box office and another 15 mil internationally, which is fucking horrific, horrific, for an absolutely ca catastrophic global opening of $44.5 million. Oh my God. The film was originally predicted to have an opening weekend between 28 and 39 mil by Box Office Pro back in May. However, the outlet would later claim the film would gross between 31 mil and 41 mil, a little bit of trickery. They specifically noted the film would earn 33 million. Variety would also report that the film would gross 35 million in its opening weekend. Goodness gracious. Let's take a look. Let's read this uh, picture caption here. In a city where fire, water, land, and air residents live together, you know, another ridiculous, euphemistic, moronic, symbolistic term for multiculturalism, a fiery young woman, of course, of course, of course, just piss on her, put her fire out, put her fire out, and a go-with-the-flow guy, what, you're not going to say that he's like an icy kind of guy? I mean, all of those descriptors for her and nothing for him? To discover something elemental, how much they actually have in common. Directed by Peter Sohn, the good dinosaur, party cloudy, sh partly cloudy, short, whatever. And produced by Denise Ream. Well, Denise is going to get her fucking shit reamed. Believe that. Believe all women believe Denise is going to get reamed. The good dinosaur Cars 2, and I didn't like Cars 2. <laughs> there was too much Toe Mater. I like Toe Mater, but there was too much of him. Disney and Pixar's Elemental release on June 16, 2023. <clears throat> Buddy, they're in trouble. They're in a lot of trouble. There is, look, there's a couple of folks out there talking right now. Let me get to the uh, big head real quick. There's a couple of folks out there talking right now. There is the realistic possibility with the way that Disney, Pixar, the subsidiary companies, ESG, DEI, all of this nonsense is coming together to make sure that Disney doesn't make a profit on any film that they release this year. Rot roll. That's a problem. That's a pro I hope they go bankrupt. I hope they have a fucking fire sale. I hope that they sell the, the Magic Castle. I hope Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty have to go behind Kentucky Fried Chicken and satisfy people just to get chicken bones. Fuck them. Cannot stand these people. I'm glad to see it happening. I'm sorry. Look, I don't wish for people's ruination until they try to sh shove chuck wagon down my throat and tell me that it's filet mignon. No, thank you. I'm good. The 29.5. Uh oh, did we? We didn't switch that back over. Let me get back to you guys there. 
The 29.5 million domestic number for the opening weekend makes the film the worst performing opening weekend haul in Pixar's entire history. The previous worst performing was the original Toy Story that has become iconic, by the way. That released back in 1995, that film grossed 29.1 mil. However, if you adjust for inflation, it's 58.1. That tells you where your dollar's gone to, gone to hell in a handbasket. Another poor performing Pixar film was Onward, which grossed 39.1 mil back in 2020. However, Onward released March of 2020, right before the world was shut down over nonsense. And we know what that was in Plandemics, baby. The Good Dinosaur. At an opening weekend of 31.1 or 39.1 in 2015, Ratatouille opened with 47 mil back in 2007. And last year's Light Year, which was shocking to me that it did this good, but it was still a flop, was 50.5 million. Yes, shocking, absolutely shocking that that film opened with 50 and a half, but it dudded out. Big time. Disney scooper and analyst WTW Pro also notes that something like half the audience is going to see Elemental versus the previous worst situation that Pixar has faced, The Good Dinosaur. He makes the calculation by looking at the average ticket price for films in 15. That's 2015. The year The Good Dinosaur released in ticket prices in 2023, which are a lot more. In 2015, according to the numbers, the average ticket price was $8.43. The average ticket price in 2023 is $10.45. So, I mean, that speaks to what uh, folks are saying. Let me get back to the big head real quick. If you keep up with the entertainment industry, movie, box office prices, tickets, numbers of butts and seats, that's in line with what people have been saying now for about a year. Higher ticket prices, less people coming. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. So higher ticket prices, less people coming. So you've still got some margin, but most of it's gone, gang. Most of it's gone. The Good Dinosaur grossed a total of 114.7 mil domestically and sold 13.6 million tickets. It's a lot of fucking tickets. It's a lot of tickets. Not only did the film bomb at the box office, but Pixar boss Pete Doctor was already making excuses for it before it arrived in the theaters. Of course, of course. Let's get down here a little bit. See what we can see. What we can see. This, this looks like shit. It looks like shit. It really does. What is this about the non-binary or gay cloud or the gay f- friggin' fire girl? What the fuck ever. You know, with the layers, we go in and we try to physically and do physical and verbal comedy. We look at the visual puns and approach as many different venues as we can. So there's really something uh, there for everybody. That's the hope. Well, if it's anything like Disney's last pile of shit and every pile of shit that they have produced, my goodness, doesn't anybody over at Disney understand that this, this obsession, obsession, with dumbing down everything, with identity politics being just smashed, smashed into everything. The ill-timed humor. You can't have a moment of tension in anything that Disney produces because as soon as somebody dies and their guts are all over the fucking ground and everybody's weeping, somebody cracks a dumb fucking joke. What is that? What is, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. And it, it, it was incredibly prevalent in uh, Marvel's Phase 4. Incredibly prevalent. in all of the TV shit that they did for the Marvel TV shows, just stupid, ridiculous, ill-timed humor. Stupid humor. It makes you wonder what they're trying to do. I mean, is, this, is it an intentional sabotage? It's strange. It's strange. Anyways... I don't like the humor that Disney injects into their uh, films. I don't like Disney films. I haven't really cared for Pixar for some time. And uh, I don't plan on it anytime soon. So please keep doing what you're doing, Disney. Lose all the money that you want to do. Because every time you do, you make a space wide enough for one of me to walk through it. And there's a lot of people that are walking through it. 